I'd like to talk to you today about Satan's trinity of evil religions. There's this weird teaching out there of this trinity thing. A lot of people don't really understand it. They haven't studied it in detail. And um, it's more than just a pagan system of three different beings calling themselves God and whatever else. And there's no basis in scripture for it. No, it's more than that. Um, it goes into a lot of other deep philosophies tied into those systems that promote this trinity doctrine. Um, let me show you my little chart I made here. Roman Catholicism. There are three different main big religions out there. You have Roman Catholicism, Islam, and Talmudic, Talmudic uh, Judaism. Not all Jews are involved with the Talmud or whatever else, understand that. But the ones that are are really messed up. Roman Catholicism is not Islam. Now, I believe Islam came from Roman Catholicism, but it's not the same thing exactly. Roman Catholicism is not Talmudic Judaism. Ju Talmudic Judaism is not Islam. Much the same as the uh, Trinity symbol here. Roman Catholicism, Catholicism is a rejection of the teachings of Jesus Christ. They tweak it, they, they change it a little bit there and whatever else. They're the closest to what Jesus Christ said, but Jesus never told anybody to become a pope and have people come and bow down and kiss his foot and whatever in his ring. There's no, nothing like that. Jesus Christ never said build a big building, a cathedral, a basilica. Jesus didn't do those things. And I could get into a whole lot more detail on this one, um, not being what Jesus Christ said, but we'll go on to the next one. Islam is also a rejection of the teachings of Jesus Christ. Jesus is just a prophet. He's not even the greatest prophet. Muhammad is the greatest prophet, according to Islam. Um... So, there again. And of course, Talmudic Judaism is definitely a rejection of the teachings of Jesus Christ. And what all three of these do not realize is that Jesus Christ is God. Completely holy God. He's not one of three gods, one of three beings calling themselves God. Uh, that's not it at all. all right? And I'm going to be talking about that in this study when we get into the scriptures. But I just want to make a few points here on this whole thing. And you can see that these three different world religions, the three big ones, all are representing the three sons of Noah. Japheth, uh, the white Europeans, Ham, the African, and Shem, the Oriental, including the Jew. Let me make a few points here. Uh, first and foremost, you have to remember, always remember this, that Satan's ministers appear as the ministers of righteousness. All right, so you would say, well, this is crazy. These are good religious people here and here and here. There's a lot of good people in there and, and things. But Satan's ministers appear as the ministers of righteousness. Satan is not part of the whole satanic church and whatever else. That, that's just they are confused about who Satan really is. Satan's realm is right here, out here, not in here. Uh, another thing I want to make a very important mention of and that is that all three of these systems have a problem with pedophilia. It's very well known that uh, Muhammad was messing around with, a, I think it was Aisha or something like that, a 10-year-old girl, 9-year-old girl, somewhere in there. Um, Islam, they mess around with little girls. Now, I realize not all, but they're, it's there. Pedophilia is there. Talmudic Judaism, there's some of the writings there in the Talmud that say about that you can take a 3-year-old bride a young girl, a three-year-old girl, and you can do perverted things with her. Uh, you can look that up. All right. Uh, Stranger Than Fiction had a video showing the actual proof of that, where they were showing right from the Talmud where it says about a three-year-old girl. So they're pedophiles as well. Up here, Roman Catholicism, I think there's a little bit of a pedophile problem there. All right. They still have Jesus as a child, and there's images of Catholic priests you know, kissing, seductively kissing this little baby Jesus and things. Jesus is not a little baby anymore. All right. But the Catholics obviously are probably the most well-known pedophiles out there. It's just a, it's an epidemic within the Catholic church. All right. Uh, very interesting there. Um, another point I want to make, all three of these world religions here, all three add to the scriptures. The Bible is not enough. You have the Roman Catholics, they add their catechism and all their traditions of men and, you know, uh, all the different things that they, they do. Islam 
adds the Quran and some of their other holy books, most of which I have up here. Judaism, they rejected Jesus Christ. The nation of Israel rejected him, and they said, okay, let's come out with the Talmud. And then let's bring in the Kabbalah and all these other satanic things. Uh, <clears throat> and another one, just looking at my points here, all three of these think that they are the true path to heaven or the true path that you should follow, I'll say it that way. They all think that they are the one true faith. Isn't that interesting? Um, another one. They all are involved with politics and money. The Vatican Bank, the Jews down here, uh, they get involved in some financial stuff and certainly the creation of the Federal Reserve and a lot of the other scheming and things that they do. And Islam, uh, certainly there's some very big political and money connections there with their oil, you know, wealth and everything else that they get into. Um, they all want world domination and a political kingdom. They all believe that they're eventually going to get that. They're all vying and fighting for this political kingdom that they want to bring in. And um, finally, the last point I'm going to make about this, I'll make some more as I'm going through the scriptures, but the last point I want to make about this is that Jesus Christ is going to destroy all three of these. They rejected him. And understand, rejecting Jesus Christ doesn't mean that you've rejected the words of some, just some prophet. No, he's, you know, you can accept or reject him. He's whatever. Jesus is God. Holy, completely God. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There isn't any kind of a thing of, well, you know, daddy's in heaven and he's a lot more powerful than me or whatever. When the Bible talks about the father being in heaven, it's talking about the soul. All right. And it's, it's the Godhead doctrine. None of the three of these understand the Godhead doctrine because they're not saved. They're not born again. They don't have the Holy Spirit of God to guide them into all truth. But Jesus Christ, first, there's going to be a, a covenant made between the Antichrist and the nation of Israel. There's going to be this um, covenant that's confirmed. And that covenant, I believe, is going to be to destroy Islam. After Islam is destroyed... Then Revelation 17 describes Roman Catholicism as Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Revelation 18 describes how she's destroyed in one hour. There are kings that rise up and they destroy her, burn her flesh, as it were, with fire. Roman Catholicism gets destroyed. Islam first, then Roman Catholicism. And what's left? You have the merchants of the earth. They weep and they wail because they see that their money's gone. You see? Their cash crop, their cash cow is gone now. Hmm. And the Lord puts an end to Talmudic Judaism. All right. Now let me zoom the camera back out here. Like that. I'll have to turn the... About right there, I guess. Excuse me while I do this. There we go. Okay. That should do it. <laughs> All right. Now I can actually stand here and point to the thing and whatever without having to bend down. <clears throat> Let's go to the Bible now, and I'm going to show you from the Scriptures what I'm talking about. John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 44 through 50. The Bible says here, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. Well, who is he referring to? Him that sent me. That would be God the Father. And by the way, there is no God the Son or God the Holy Spirit. If you look at the actual image here of what they will put out, just do a Google search for Trinity. And you'll look at you know Google Images search for Trinity, and you'll find this thing here, and it'll say, you know, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Father. And the Son is not the Father, the Father is not the Holy Spirit, the, you know, and they, they have it set up this way, but they, you know, the Son, God the Son is God. And they'll have God in the middle here. You can look up that image, very famous thing. And that's where they're confused, that's where they're wrong. All right. 
um, understand the Godhead doctrine, which I've written a book about it. It's back behind here, right there, Godhead doctrine. And, um, and you don't have to get the book. You can just read your King James Bible. You'll come up with the same conclusion. Godhead appears three different times in the Bible. Um, and uh, I think it's um, in the book of Acts, the book of Romans, and Colossians, I think it is. But the whole point is, Godhead appears in the King James Bible. Trinity does not. Trinity is a man-made invention. All right, one of the uh, church fathers, uh, again, adding to Scripture. But this teaching is, the Trinity teaches that there are three different persons, no Scripture for that, there's persons, every time persons shows up in the King James Bible, never refers to God, not once. Three different persons they're all co-equal in power, and they all make up the one God, okay? But they are not the same person. Uh, that's heresy. It's not what the King James Bible teaches. What the King James Bible teaches is that there are three different parts, a body, a soul, and a spirit. They are separate. They can be completely separated, but they're all part of the one person of God. That's what the King James Bible teaches, just to get that out there. So when Jesus Christ says there, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. He's saying, this isn't some kind of a thing of you can just reject his teachings because he's just another prophet. No, no. They say another prophet. They say a false prophet down here. And the Roman Catholics say, well, he is God, but he's just God the Son. God the Son appears nowhere in scripture. That's an added title. There's no scripture for that. Right now, I don't know about these Vatican versions. They come out with all kinds of stuff. But in the pure word of God, the King James Bible, um, there's no God the Son. Okay, so you hear some guy saying that. He's adding to the scriptures. But on him that sent me, it's a reference to God the Father. Right, The soul of the Godhead. Continue, verse 45. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Now, how could Jesus Christ say that? All right, because he is God. The Father is also, it's right there inside him. If you're looking at me, you're seeing the flesh of Brian Denlinger, but you're also seeing the soul. The soul is inside the body. Man is made in the image of God, in the likeness of God. It's not really that hard to figure out, okay? Um, it, it really isn't. Verse 46, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not walk in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Um, what are you going to be judged by? Scripture. They don't believe in the scriptures alone. Nor do they, nor do they. They reject the teachings of Jesus Christ. What are the teachings of Jesus Christ? The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Don't worry about the church fathers. Don't worry about what the popes have said. Don't worry about those things. And Oh, there's a guy named Muhammad that showed up and he had these revelations coming from an well, well, angel with 600 wings or whatever it was. Forget that. Well, we had the rabbis down here. The rabbis that, you know, when they weren't raping children, they were writing nice things and whatever else and stuff about you know, hating Jesus Christ and, and no, no. If you reject what Jesus Christ said, where, what did he say? It's written in the New, New Testament here. If you reject that, then you're going to be judged according to those standards. Verse 49, for I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. You say, well, see, it's, it has to be two separate persons. It has to be two separate persons. No, it doesn't. The soul can speak. And you can hear it. You can say, okay, the spirit of your mind and your soul and your body can hear that. That's sometimes that inner voice that you hear. Some That still small voice of the, of the Lord when he speaks to you as a Christian. But what I'm saying is you have that inner feeling, that gut feeling. That's what's going on there. Your soul is speaking to your flesh. 
Even lost people talk about that. I went down this one area, this uh, back alley of this city or something, and I just got this feeling of, oh, like I'm being watched or something bad, and I had to get out of there. Well, what happened? I don't know. You know, I just I had that bad feeling, and I needed to leave. It's your soul warning your body of flesh. So if we can experience that on a very low level, what about God? It's perfectly clear for Him. So the Father in heaven, we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, by the way, so don't give me this stuff of how could it be in heaven and, and in the earth, you know, soul up there and soul in Jesus at the same time. Well, you're the same way if, if you're saved, all right? And, you know, I, I realize there's a lot of people that watch my videos that are lost and this stuff goes right over their head. And they, well, uh, this doesn't make sense of it yet yeah, because you're lost. You don't get it, all right? But this is what the New Testament teaches. But there's a lot of people that, they feel this, but they don't understand what it is. Well, the Bible explains what it is. And with God manifest in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's walking around on the earth and his soul, seated in heaven, but also inside of Jesus Christ, his soul is saying things and speaking things. And Jesus is speaking that. And he's saying, I have the same authority as my Father in heaven. The soul that's in heaven. Oh, it's just too much. I, I just don't understand. This has to be heresy. This, this can't be. And whatever. You have to get saved. You have to understand. The Bible way is, if you want to understand all of this stuff that I'm talking about here, um, I mean, you can see the plain things I've been saying about this right here. Anybody that's honest can say, yeah, there's a problem with pedophilia. Yes, they're each trying to build a kingdom. Um, that stuff is there. That's common sense. But you get into the Godhead doctrine stuff, yeah, it's very strong meat. And a lot of lost people, they just don't understand it. I'm explaining it to make you see the folly of the Trinitarian system and the folly of just simply saying, oh, Jesus was just a prophet and Jesus was a false prophet and uh, was a product of fornication between a Roman soldier and Mary that she was a whore or something. That's what this satanic junk down here says. Um, there's folly with these systems right here. The teachings of Jesus Christ are something that you have to understand by way of revelation. It has to be revealed. And how do you get that revelation? By understanding why did Jesus Christ come to the earth? Jesus Christ didn't come to the earth to build this huge, big, worldwide, powerful empire with basilicas and cathedrals and, and worth untold trillions of dollars. Jesus didn't come to build that. Jesus didn't come to say, okay, we're going to build this oil empire over here with Islam, or we're going to build a satanic finance Hollywood, you know, evil system down here. Jesus Christ doesn't have anything to do with the three of these. All right. His, he came to set up a system where he died on the cross to pay for your sins. And until you are broken to the point where you can say, you know what, I need to be saved. I need, I understand I'm a sinner. I'm very wicked. I need, he died on the cross to pay for me, for my sins. Wow, that's amazing. The love he had for me. God, would you please accept me? Would you please save me? I want to go to heaven when I die. See, most people never get to that point. They will not humble themselves. Well, <clears throat> who do you think you are? Don't you know that I am most reverend, holy father, archbishop, cardinal, blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh I'm, a, I'm an imam. I'm a very holy. I've been to Mecca. Have you ever been? Have you ever made a pilgrimage to Mecca? I have. I I bow down and you know or whatever they do, you know. Oh, I bow down. Okay, bow down towards the east, towards some stupid rock or whatever over there. Well, I do that, you know. How about down here? Well, I'm a Jew. I'm I I have all this special stuff and everything else. I understand things. And your New Testament's a lie. And I follow the Noahide laws and all this other. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's all self-righteousness. This whole system out here is self-righteousness. This in here is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. His righteousness can be imputed to you. His Holy Spirit can be given to you. And then you understand what a nut like me is talking about. And you understand the New Testament. But if you don't come broken to the Lord before him and accept his death, burial, and resurrection to pay for your sins... If you don't do that, then you might as well just get ready to go to hell. Join which one you want.
Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, beginning in verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Interesting because the three of these will have stars in their system. Especially down here. These wicked satanic uh, Jews down here with the, the read their Talmud. And they have this uh, hexagram. The star of Remphan. The... Uh, wicked system that it is and get into all the Kabbalah and all this other stuff. Yeah, perverts is what they are, the combination of the male and the female. This downward pointing triangle would represent the female. The upward pointing triangle represents the male. There you have the hexagram. They fly a flag with that thing on there. Never mind the pervert pride flag. How about the pervert uh, Star of David flag? There's no Star of David in here. You read the Bible, there's a Star of David. There's no star. There's no record of David having a star that he worshipped or something. Uh, Solomon, you know, his strange wives took away his heart from the Lord, worshipping the Lord. But uh, David, there's no record of him having a star. So where did it come from? It came from the occult. It came from these Jews down here rejecting Jesus Christ. They rejected God when they did that. But let's continue. Verse 17, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth, Say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. All three of these groups have a very key part in the book of Revelation. What's the book called? The Revelation of Jesus Christ. All three have rejected the true Jesus Christ of the Bible. They reject his teachings. And so Jesus Christ is going to reveal himself to all three of these groups. He's going to add the plagues to them. Why? Because they rejected him. They rejected his book. Verse 19, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Uh, it's a pretty serious warning. You don't want to mess with this Bible. Say, give me a, a scripture saying that sola scriptura, the only the scriptures. Uh, how about Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 and 19? How about that? You say, it's just about the book, the book of this prophecy, the book of Revelation there. It doesn't matter. Even it, you know, I believe it's the whole book because the whole Bible has warning after warning about adding to or taking away from the words of the whole Bible. And I can prove that. I've proved it in other studies. But even if it is just the book of Revelation, all three of these satanic cults take away from the words of the book of Revelation. They all doubt. They all cause doubt. They all say, no, it's not exactly. It's just symbolic. It's just this. It's just that. They all do it. <laughs> so either way, you're, you're finished. Either way. Finally, we'll go to John chapter 8. I have a lot of studies on the Godhead doctrine if you want to watch all the different videos. But, you know, quite frankly... Um, I can speak till I'm blue in the face. You can watch all the stuff I've ever done preached on this issue. But if you're not born again, you will, you're will you just not going to understand it. It won't make any sense to you. If you don't approach the Lord humbly, Jesus is not some buddy or homeboy or whatever else. Or some, just, oh, he's just a prophet. No, Jesus Christ is God, creator of heaven and earth. He is not one that you just kind of go up and, hey, you know, Jesus. No, you come to him as he is, King of kings and Lord of lords. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus has the preeminence in all things. You don't get up there and the Father is up there and Jesus is sitting on a little you know, stool beside him. and you know, No, the soul and the body can separate and they do. You see that in heaven. But we're talking about this, is, this being is God. It doesn't, I, I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense. It's contradictory because you're lost. That's the whole thing. It's just that simple. I can judge anybody out there. You don't believe that Jesus is God, you're lost. You're on your way to hell. And we'll see that here. John chapter 8, beginning in verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Here's the light. Here's darkness. 
darkness and darkness. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. <laughs> He's a false prophet, that's what they still believe today. Not much changed. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. His record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. Okay? The Father is the soul. That's why he's sent from the Father. You say, well, it doesn't make sense. Why would he call him the Father? I'm the Son, he's the Father. Because if he doesn't, then people would say, well, then how are you born and whatever else. Jesus is clearly saying, a body hast thou prepared me. The soul of God prepared this body that Jesus Christ is now in. That's what's going on there. <clears throat> Verse 17. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears, beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. The Father and the Son are the same being. You're not looking in the... Where's your, where's your Father at? Where, do, where is he? I don't understand. Is, could you have him come here? You can't see him. He's the soul of the Godhead. Verse 20. These words spake Jesus in the treasury and he taught as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, for his hour is not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way and ye shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. How about that one? <clears throat> I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Hmm. Whither I go, ye cannot come. The thousand-year kingdom of Jesus Christ. Heaven, of course, as well. That's the big one. But the thousand-year kingdom of Jesus Christ? Sorry, no Catholics allowed. Sorry, no Muslims allowed. Sorry, no Talmudic Jews allowed. You want to have your Talmud and everything, your Kabbalah and all this other... No, sorry, can't come in. You're a servant of hell. <clears throat> then said the Jews, Will he kill himself, because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath... I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. But look at verse 24. Remember the context. Who's he talking about up here in verse 19? Father, Father, Father. says it three times. Look at verse 24. He's talking about the Father, in other words, in context. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Now, people have gotten really mad at me, but it's just plain as day right there in the scriptures. And I've seen people that claim to be King James only, and they will remove the word he. They won't say it because, you see, they understand the implication there. If ye believe not, <coughs> excuse me, that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God completely, meaning the Father, God the Father and Jesus Christ, they're the same being. They're not the same part. Understand that. I'm not saying that they're completely the same, that there is no Son of God, that He's just God the Father in the flesh. I didn't say that. I said the Son and the Father are separate in terms of body and soul. Don't lie about me. Okay? You say, oh, Brian Denlinger teaches that there is no God the Son or, or well, no, no Son of God. I'll say it that way. I teach that there's no God the Son because that title doesn't appear in Scripture. But Son of God does. All right, so be very careful because you will stand before God someday and you will give an account lying about me and anybody else that you lie about because if you're lying about me, then I'm sure you lie about a lot of people. All right, <clears throat> but please understand here. If you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. You must believe that Jesus Christ is God. Now, you might not understand the whole implications of it or whatever else. A lot of people that study the Godhead doctrine for the first time they read my book, they look at the sermons, they say, you know, I never understood, I never made these connections before, but wow, it's right there. 
It's what the Bible teaches. It's, again, it's not me. It's what the Bible teaches. Right? But I've always believed that Jesus was God. I just didn't understand how's the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, how does it all work together? And you understand it's just three parts. You know, it's so funny too because I've talked to Trinitarians and they say, you're teaching heresy that there's three parts. That's ridiculous. That's nonsense. And I say, okay, do you believe that Jesus or that, that man is a tripartite being? Well, yes, of course. That's, that's classic Trinitarianism. You know, that man is a tripartite being. Um, <clears throat> what does tripartite mean? Tri. Three. Part. Partite. Three parts. Well, that's man. That's not God. It's not the same. Well, man is made after the image of God. After his likeness. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so extremely weird. These people, they, there's a confusing spirit there with Trinitarians. They're really mixed up. And you, you're going to hell, Denninger. You're going to split hell wide open and all this other stuff because you're, you're against the Trinity. So Jesus is going to judge me someday based on a word that doesn't even appear in the King James Bible? You wicked, wicked pagans, you? Jesus Christ is not going to judge me because I don't believe in the Trinity. Okay, Jesus Christ will judge you because you don't believe in the Godhead. The Godhead appears three times in the King James Bible. Trinity appears nowhere. But if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God, God the Father dwelling in the body of Jesus Christ, they don't believe that. You don't believe it? You'll die in your sins. Why? Well, think about it. If these idiots down here are right, then Jesus Christ was a false prophet. He died on the cross. Well, you know, got killed for his trouble, like the little idiot Ben Shapiro said. Um, could he save you if that's the truth? No, he can't save you. Jesus is just a prophet up here. Um, okay, just a prophet. Not as good as Muhammad? No, Muhammad was a much better prophet. You know, there's no record of Jesus raping a child, you know, pedophilia or whatever else. So he, I guess, wasn't as good as Muhammad. A little messed up there. But uh, Jesus never had any kind of sexual relations with anybody. So I guess, yeah, he wasn't quite on Muhammad's level. You'll die in your sins. What about this one over here? Um, do you believe that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh? Well, you know, in, in essence <laughs> or something. You know, yes, he, he was more than a prophet. He, he is God, but he's king. And, and he kind of gave his authority, the keys of heaven and hell. He gave them to St. Peter. And then St. Peter became God after Jesus was God. And then all men can become God eventually, you know, maybe if you can get to the level of Pope and, and whatever else and things. And, and what do you believe about Jesus? We have to eat his flesh and drink his blood. That's not what he meant in John chapter 6, by the way. I'll be doing a video on that in the future. I've already done the videos, the King Jesus version stuff. What was Jesus referring to when he meant the flesh and the blood? You know, the bread and the wine. What was Jesus really referring to? The Bible. Bread's the Old Testament. Wine, the blood, is the uh, New Testament. Proved it. Proved it from the scriptures. That's what you live by. That's what you consume. You eat the word of God. Okay, meaning you constantly, it's more to be desired than your necessary food, like David wrote about. Getting a little bit too deep for some of you, but. And I don't say that from pride. I'm just saying it from that's the truth. But you see, all three reject Jesus Christ. All three do. If you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Verse 25. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. Again, I am he. What's, what's he referring to? He's referring to the fact that he's God. Oh, the Bible never teaches that you know, Jesus never claimed to be God. Yes, he did. Over and over again, all through this. John chapter 8, just read John chapter 8. He's referring not just to the fact that he's God, but that he is the Father as well. The Father is the soul. The soul speaks to the flesh. 
<clears throat> Verse 29, And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. I hope that some of you believe on what I'm saying, that you believe in Jesus Christ. Don't reject his teachings, because if you do, you're rejecting God. Don't claim that you love the Father and you hate the Son, because it's not true. <clears throat> Verse 31, then said, Jesus, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my, my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Isn't that interesting? Ye shall know the truth if you continue in God's word. Hmm. Are you free here? No. 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 These are all systems of slavery. You want to have a good baptism, which can give you a good marriage, which can give you a good job and good insurance policies, of course, as well. And then you can get a good burial and you can have, you know, retirement home and you know, everything. We'll provide everything for you. You can be part of the Roman Catholic community. You're part of the church. How about over here? Do they do the same thing? Uh-huh. Yeah. How about down here? Same thing. Huh. You're in bondage. These three systems are bondage. I have freedom because I believe the word of God. So I look and I say, Roman Catholicism. Study the Roman Catholic Church. Read the, the catechism. Read it. Mm, yeah, it doesn't line up with the scriptures. No, no thank you. Over here, look at the Quran. Look at all the different stuff that they teach up here. There you go. I have the books. See, I'm free to read this stuff. I don't have to worry about my priest or my rabbi or my imam or whatever coming into my office here and saying, what is this heretical book doing here? I don't, I can study all their books. History of Judaism over here, the Holy Scriptures, Hebrew and English. I have other books and things. I don't know if I have a copy of the Talmud yet. I'll probably have to get one of those. I can study whatever I want. I have freedom to do that. I won't be kicked out. But it's not the same thing over here. Jesus Christ made me free. Verse 33. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? That's the thing, it's so funny. They think that they're free, and they're not. They're slaves. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Is there any help from sin here? No. You just kind of do the rituals and the, you know, follow the things, and hopefully, you know, that will keep you busy enough that you won't have time to sin. And to, oh, that... Oh, okay, over there, oh man, looking at the, oh boy, you know, they start to lust after the flesh, in other words, is what I'm trying to say. Um, they're the servants of sin. Verse 35, And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. You know how to get freedom from this, this, and this? I'm not saying to reject Jesus Christ's teachings. I'm saying Jesus Christ is the only one that can set you free from this slavery. The only one. Verse 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. They reject the teachings of Jesus Christ. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Speaking spiritually. Okay, how do you know? Because if you go back up there to verse 37, I know that ye are Abraham's seed. So Jesus Christ is switching things here from physical seed, Abraham's seed. You are children of Israel there. Yes, absolutely. But that's physical. Spiritually, you're of your father the devil. Let's read it. Verse 40, But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. They say unto, said unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. And you know what? They still teach that. That Jesus was born of fornication. Deserving of hell much? Verse 42, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. 
Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Can you imagine that? They're saying, God is our Father, and they're talking to God right there. <laughs> Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are, of, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. Mm -hmm. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. The words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't look at me, oh, you're so negative, you just never smile and all this other... You're so negative, you, you, you push people away and... What about what Jesus Christ just said right there? Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is that one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? They still don't understand what he's, you know, who he is. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honor, honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him, and if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus never claimed to be God. He just did. All you wicked people out there, these two especially, these won't as much, but these two right here, Jesus never claimed to be God. Yes, he did. Yes, he absolutely did. I am that I am. One of God's titles. Before Abraham was, I am. And look at their reaction. Verse 59. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. And you know, it's interesting, all three of these like to cast stones at those of us that follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. They like to kill us. All three of these groups have killed Christians. Hmm. Now I could keep going on and on and showing you more and more scriptures that talk about Jesus Christ being God. And I could debunk the Quran and the catechism and and I've heard enough about the, this nonsense down here that I could rebuke that and whatever else too. Um, but the fact of the matter is I'm wasting my time with most of these people in these three groups right here because it's their system that they're in bondage to. And it's a system of self-righteousness. And you see Jesus Christ, the main teaching of Jesus Christ, the main purpose for Jesus Christ is to put an end to self-righteousness. It is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And the Apostle Paul says, of whom I am chief. Well, I beg to differ, Paul. You see, I think I'm a worse sinner than you were. And another Christian says, I don't know about that. I'm a pretty bad sinner myself. Amen? Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's have a competition. Who was the worst sinner before they got saved? Let's brag on Jesus Christ. Let's lift up Jesus Christ and not, well, <clears throat> I, yes, I'm no saint perhaps, but uh, you know, I do faithfully attend Mass every week. Well, I have been to Mecca. I've made a pilgrimage. I'm very faithful in making my pilgrimages and I bow down and I hold it down here. Well, I do, you know, I'm Torah observant and I try to, to you know, do what's right and I you know I, I do give to charitable organizations. Self righteousness, self righteousness, self righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus Christ for sinners. 
That's just the simple way that it is. You reject that. If you believe not that I am he, he shall die in your sins. Plain and simple. The New Testament is finished. Jesus Christ dies on the cross. It is finished. You accept him or you reject him. You accept him, you go to heaven when you die. You reject him, you go to hell. Oh, no, 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 that's not quite right, brother Brian, because the, the Jews are God's chosen people. They go to hell. <clears throat> John chapter 8 talks about that. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. The Jews aren't saved. The Jews need Jesus Christ. They need to come to him and have his righteousness imputed to them. They're just as dirty and filthy as the rest of us. Hello. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> the, the New Testament's an anti-Semitic book because it says nasty things about the Jews. Uh, the New Testament is an anti-man book. It's against mankind. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Not just the Jews. The Japhetic people, the Hamitic people, the other Shemitic people out there, all have sinned. All need to come to God manifest in the flesh. And if you believe not that He is God, you believe not that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. Enough said. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next study.